What's up guys, StuDog here, welcome back. We got some more GOAT format dual commentary. And my god, we got an extreme heavyweight matchup. We got someone in the 1700s here, no joke. 1700s, we got Geist D. 1753, that rating is just outrageous. That is probably the top 10, if not higher, in the ranking system on this website. But anyway, someone just um, resolved a cyber jar here, so, yep. Gonna get a whole bunch of free resources. Oh my god, this might be a long one. Upstart Goblin, that Heavy Storm, that Thunder Dragon. <laughs> but anyway, so, Geist D at 1753. And then we also got Compt Alternif the Third. Okay then, I have no idea what that means, probably pronouncing it wrong, but whatever. Just gonna call him Compt. So, they're gonna set the Thunder Dragon, or no, we're not gonna set the Thunder Dragon, they're gonna set the, the Sand Gating, because this is only like level 4 lowers, right? Yeah, especially some of the level 4 lowers, and Thunder Dragon's a level 5, so it's actually really convenient that that doesn't get set, because you can just pitch it to get a couple of free deck thins there and then main phase two he's gonna play that upstart goblin and those will bring comps up to nine grand and then he's got the pot of greed as well oh yeah it's like what turn two of the match turn two of the duel and you're already halfway through your deck i mean this is freaking goat format you're halfway through your deck on turn two in goat format like are you kidding me right now that's cyber jar for you that is cyber jar for you kids my goodness Man, I really don't know why this card wasn't banned during this format, but whatever. Like, God, this card is just so sacky, just mad sacky. The complete definition of sacky. Like, if you don't know what sacky means, just read that card text, and you should probably have a good understanding of what that word means. <laughs> but anyway, main phase two is going to Nolman to cross out a Dez Koala here, and then Compt will lose all those copies. Highly doubt that Geist D is playing any of his own. So he's going to lose... The other two copies of Dez Koala, which kind of sucks, then he's going to just summon a BLS in main phase 2 in defense mode, dang. Seems a little early to be dropping BLS, but I mean, I guess, <laughs> no pun intended, BLS, I guess, see, see, those two, those two words rhyme. <laughs> anyway, he's going to be banishing not the middle monster, and that gets rid of a tribe infecting virus, that's actually a pretty good banish, because he was just going to flip someone that next turn, and then use its effect to clean up the BLS most likely, I mean he has a whole bunch of resources to work with so the discard is barely even a cost, I mean he probably has Sinister Serpent by now, good chance that he has the Sinister Serpent in his hand. Well then again he might not even be playing Sinister Serpent because he is playing, you know, Dez Koala in Cyber Jar, not your ordinary GOAT format deck. You know, not everyone in GOAT format played Sinister Serpent, even though it's a pretty awesome card. So anyway, what else does Geistop have up his sleeve? I mean, he has to commit some more cards. He has like three, six, he has nine cards in his hand. So you got to commit three more or they're just going to go to waste. You know he has a heavy storm and he's thinking, oh yeah, I mean, you better think you got that 1750 rating. Like, man, that is like almost as good as my best rating ever on Dueling Network and just regular old rated and this is GOAT format. Now then again, I don't know if GOAT format rated actually gets reset every format. I do not know that. If someone does know that, please leave that in the comment section below because for all I know, GOAT format... Because the, the GOAT format rated started sometime last year, so for all I know, it could have like not gotten reset once. But anyway, Min Phase 2 is going to tribute set a Sangin and the Sangin still going to get a search, so... Again, Geist has to commit three more cards, unless he's just content with discarding those Thunder Dragons during the end phase, which he might be. Sangin is going to search out Tsukiyomi here. And what will it be? Are you going to discard those Thunder Dragons during the end phase, I guess? Well, he probably did that for the Tribute set, and I'm assuming that's just Thunder Dragon set, so he probably only has one more in his hand. I mean, just 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 set some bluffs, man. Are really gonna live in that much fear over heavy storm? I mean, yeah, Compt could have the heavy storm, but just just set him. You're gonna lose him anyway, right? So yeah, he is gonna be setting two more. 
And then Enfei is just going to give up the Sinister. Okay, so that's fine. No, he has another Thunder Dragon in his hand. And, you know, these might just be bluffs here, but whatever. So, it's back to Comp's turn. He's going to activate that beautiful Pot of Greed. And by beautiful, I mean not really that beautiful at all. I mean, unless you think disgusting, you know, rotting teeth is beautiful. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this card is does have really awesome artwork. It has awesome artwork, but I would definitely not classify it as beautiful. And just what I was talking about, I was saying, you know, you know he's going to have the Heavy Storm. Can't really live in fear of the Heavy Storm. I mean, you're going to discard the cards anyway. And... He's going to book a moon in his own BLS, I mean, I guess. Again, no pun intended on these rhymes. I don't know how, the, how these rhymes just keep happening, but again, no pun intended. And you know, we are starting to get an audience here. This is the highest rated GOAT format rated match that is going on right now. <clears throat> so we do have a little bit of an audience here. Let's see if anyone's saying anything. No one's saying anything right now. How unfortunate. So anyway, he's going to be premature barreling Cyberjar out of all cards. Okay then. And you know Geist D has his own heavy storm, so... Don't really know why you're setting all these, but whatever, man. <laughs> Unless he has game. So there's Ceasefire, and that's going to burn for like three grand, I believe. Oh god. And he will not get the effect of the Magician of Faith. So, yep, three grand, and then he's gonna ring a destruction the BLS for another three grand. And yeah, he's probably gonna have game. So, this is gonna be some semi burn goat format deck from Comtier. And he is so close to getting a game one victory against one of the highest rated guys in goat format. And there's a couple of secret barrels, and that is most definitely game. So, wow, an unexpected win. I mean, yeah, you thought he was being an idiot, you thought he was like, why are you setting four cards when you know your opponent has the Heavy Storm from the, the god dang Cyber Jar? Nope, they were all burn cards. A couple of secret barrels, along with, um, along with Ring of Destruction and that other trap, but my goodness. So, Compt gets the game one victory here against the 1700 rating guy with his burn, so now that he knows that he's playing burn, he can, you know, play the game a little differently. Because, I mean, if he would have known he was playing the secret barrels, I think he kind of would have discarded some more cards during the end phase instead of just setting those scapegoats to try to... I mean, I guess it didn't really matter in the end, though, but... Mmm. Did not see that one coming. Not at all. So, anyway, we're going to pause the video here, wait for these guys to side deck, and we'll be right back with game number two. Okay, welcome to game number two. Both these guys got themselves a 40-card deck. Unlimited extra decks as always. If you don't have an unlimited extra deck in GOAT format, you are doing something really, really wrong, man. That's all I gotta say. So he's gonna start things off with the typical GOAT format play. You know, set a T, ditch a Thunder Dragon, get a quick plus one. Conveniently doesn't open multiple copies of itself. You know, if it was me, I would get multiple copies of it. But, you know, since he's 1700 rating, that is two consecutive games. Conveniently, not drawing multiple thunder dragons at once so he's gonna normal summon a giant rat and then normal to cross out a decoichi here and that will be able to banish all the copies unfortunately only one more copy and the giant rat's gonna poke for 14 here so all the damage that comp did in the previous duel was from burn but it's kind of nice if he's playing a burn strategy to get some damage in without actually burning, you know? So, I don't know if he sided out a whole bunch of those burn cards. I don't know if that's just a, a game one strategy or what, but, I mean, just a random giant rat out of nowhere. And, like, that just, yeah, did not, did not really see that one coming. So, anyway, Graceful Charity is activated. <laughs> Gonna be drawing three cards and then discarding a Mobius along with a Book of Moon. Okay then, I'm just gonna throw the MST, the MST of the one back row in. Ooh, that is a very nice hit, getting rid of that Royal Decree. As that could have just completely stopped all of those burn cards. But then again, we've gone through like 10 cards into Comp's deck. And we haven't seen any traps or burn cards yet. <laughs> so yeah. So 
there's a mind control activated on the set apprentice magician. He's just gonna flip summon it here, and he's gonna poke for 16 and 14. And oh, Geist D is below 4,000. Like, dang! I swear to God, I swear this is really gonna be a swift 2 0, man. Come on, you get 1700 rating, you're gonna get 2 0'd by, by this scrub deck. <laughs> like, seriously, I want this to go to game three. So he's gonna snatch still a tribe infecting virus, use his effect to get rid of the giant rat, calling beast. And this is not a beast. And he's probably just gonna poke for two grand here. And while we wait, we can finally shout out these beautiful watchers. We got five watchers now. Oh my god, not every day we get five watchers in a in these dual castings anymore. But we got Agent Broker, we got I'm Logan. Apparently he's Logan. We got Lewis here. Lewis is here. Everyone, don't worry. And then we got Stan the Man. Or just, just Stan Man, but whatever. <laughs> so. Whole bunch of watchers. Unfortunately, no one's saying anything. Kind of sucks. Kind of wish some people would say something in here. I mean, I can. I will say something. And then that is something. I believe I got that from the Amazing World of Gumball, I think. <laughs> I think there was an episode where it was like, say something, and he said something. It was some sort of Cartoon Network cartoon. I think it was Gumball. I don't even know. <laughs> so anyway, Ceasefire activated. And that's for the second straight game. That this Magician of Faith is not going to resolve its effect despite it getting flipped. Like, God, it feels bad, man. And there's quite a bit of spells. Actually, no, there's not. There's not quite a bit of spells in this graveyard. I got, I'm got. i getting the graveyards mixed up. There's actually quite a bit of spells in this graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really not the end of the world that this Magician of Faith just fizzled there because it really wasn't anything to choose from other than the, the freaking Book of Moon, which really wasn't going to do that much anyway. So he's going to tribute off that Apprentice Magician. For a Thunder Dragon, you know, tributing for 1600 attack monsters for the win. That actually was the title of one of my previous GOAT Format dual commentary videos, you know, back in the day. You know, tributing for 1600 attack monsters. That's so bad in so many ways. So, anyway, there's a Book of Moon played on the Kaiku upon attack, attack declaration. And. Seems like Geist is actually doing decent here. He's definitely ahead on resources. That's the problem playing burn cards. I mean, those burn cards are indeed neg ones. I mean, I guess Ring of Destruction isn't, but you know, Ceasefire and Secret Barrel definitely are neg ones. So the tribe's gonna attack over the Kaiku, then Thunder Dragon's just gonna poke for 16 here. And Kamsha's just gonna swiftly emit defeat, so this is gonna go into game three. Don't worry. Y I mean, you really thought this 1700 rating guy was actually gonna get 2 0'd? Heck no, son. You know, he has the Royal Decrees in his side deck. He has all the beautiful cards in the world to completely wreck Comp's cookies here in these in these next two games. You know, he got really, really cute in that game number one. He was able to get a whole bunch of resources off that Cyber Jar. And, you know, set four burn cards and play them all in one turn and just win the duel out of nowhere. But, I mean, do you really think that's going to happen, you know, in the next in the next two games? I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, I have my money on Geist D in this game number three. I really do. But we're just going to have to wait and see here. Oh, God, we got a six watcher. Let's shout him out before we pause the video. We got Maximilian. Thanks for joining the party, man. Came at the perfect time. I was just about to pause the video, but you joined right before I paused. Okay, here it is, game number three, for all of the golden marbles. God, that catchphrase is actually getting a little, little too old, but whatever. <laughs> so just a set monster from Compt, and then Geist gonna play that graceful cherry, and then discard a Sangin along with a royal decree. Wow, really? I'm gonna give up royal decree? I mean, I know we only saw one trap last duel, but I mean, you kind of just completely lost game one because of all those traps and you're just gonna give up those royal decrees that you probably sided in like really i don't know about that but for the third consecutive game guys conveniently does not draw multiple thunder dragons and again that is how you get 1750 rating in goat format you just conveniently never brick with the thunder dragons you never draw multiple copies of them at once able to get maximum value off that 
And then he's gonna attack right into Sangin here. Okay then. Kinda sucks that you couldn't have banished that, but whatever. Now that's gonna search out Cyberjar. And you're really gonna have to have something to to play around that, you know. I don't I don't really know what you could really have other than Nolan across out, but you really need I mean I guess mind control too. You really need something to stop that cyber jar from resolving because that just completely screwed you over in the previous duel so mind control using the chaos sorcerer and he's going to attempt to use chaos sorcerer's effect on himself but book of moon was played but couldn't you just reflip some of that i mean i guess not i don't know <laughs> I guess he already had attempted to use it or whatever, but okay then. <laughs> I don't really know how that works, and there might be some random ruling I'm missing there. So we played mind control on the chaos sorcerer, and then book a moon, but couldn't he just like reflip summon it because he didn't, you know, attack or anything, or wasn't summoned that turn. But there's probably some random ruling I don't know about. But whatever, man. <laughs> I mean, these guys are much better than me. So Geist just going to set another monster here, he does have the Chaos Sorcerer set, he opts not to flip summon it, and he's just going to set a whole bunch, it looks like this Cyber Jar is indeed going to resolve, unless he got like what, a Solemn Judgment? And I highly doubt you're keeping in Solemn Judgments against a Burn deck, I mean that just seems like a t terrible strategy. Oh, Rageki Break though! Okay then, did not see that one coming. Oh, but it wasn't even the Cyber Jar, wow, the mind games are so real! So he just threw away his Regeki Brick for no reason, apparently. He thought for sure he was going to set the Cyber Jar. But no. It was the freaking giant rat, which really wasn't that much of a threat at all. So now you still have to worry about that Cyber Jar. <laughs> now that's just flat out hilarious. Some pretty clutch mind games from Cloth to turn of the third here. <laughs> To say the least, he's gonna set a monster now, and now you don't know, is that the Cyber Jar, is it not the Cyber Jar? I mean, he just went super neg to to get rid of that set monster. He thought for sure it was the Cyber Jar, and in reality, it just was a pretty useless giant rat. So, let's see. Guy's just gonna set a monster of his own here, and then back to Comp's turn. And let's see what he's gonna do. He's gonna tribute off. What the frick is this? A random panda. <laughs> uh, Gayaku Gyer Panda. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but okay then. Never seen this using goat format ever before in my entire life, but whatever. <laughs> that Mobius, a nice easy out to the royal decree. Gets rid of Royal Decree along with Book of Moon. He is going to chain the Book of Moon, and this does only have a thousand defense, so the Koichi can actually attack over it. But let's read what the frick does this do. Increase the attack this card by 500 points for each monster on your opponent's side of the field. Only has 800 original stats. And this card attacks with an attack that is higher than its defense. Oh, it has that, that long, wordy piercing. Okay. So, I mean, it has piercing, and then it just gains 500 for each monster. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't really seem that amazing, but whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's his deck, not mine. <laughs> so, let's see. He's going to tribute off the Koichi for Thunder Dragon. And then he's going to play Metamorphosis on the Thunder Dragon. And turn that into a beautiful Dark Balter the Terrible. So when a normal spell card is activated, negate the effect by paying a thousand life points. And that is a mandatory negate? The effect of an effect monster that this monster destroys as a result of battle is negated. Wow. <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't stop flip effects, right? That just that stops floater effects, not flip effects. I mean, whatever. And this will not be able to negate Snatch Deal because that is not a normal spell. So that just flat out sucks. Because <laughs> now Geist can't even play his normal spells because they're just going to get negated. Wow, how unfortunate. Okay, that just gets negated. 
Beautiful. You will gain a thousand life points, and no, you do not draw there, lol. Nope! <laughs> He's like, nope! So we got a 1700 rating guy who is trying to cheat here and rated. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I guess it was an honest mistake. He kind of got it, I guess, mixed up with the with the snatch and the, the upstart with the whole life point gain because they both gain like a thousand life points. So I think that kind of confused him there. And you know, he does want him to shuffle. He's like, shuffle, son! Better shuffle. Probably was BLS he drew right into, let me guess. And it is live, oh yeah, it is live. It is most definitely live. So our guy's just gonna set one, and you know that is not gonna be like a mirror force or anything. You know, he's setting into Royal Decrees, there's no way he has mirror forces. Or, you know, the one mirror force. And that could have just been game, I guess. He could have normal summon Kaku in main phase two, he could have just won the duel, but... Apparently winning the duel is bad. I mean, what, you really think it was gonna be Torrential Tribute or Mirror Force? I mean, he's setting into Royal Decrees. I mean, we've seen Regeki break Book of Moon, whoop de frickin' do. Haven't seen any, you know, power traps from Geist this entire match. He literally just could've won the duel, but whatever, man. <laughs> it's not me dueling. So there's Graceful Charity played from Compt. He's gonna pitch a Disc Koala along with a Morphing Jar. And what do you know, that Cyber Jar that he searched off the sand again never even used this entire match. And he's just gonna play Creature Swap. And this probably should be a wrap here, I would think. As that's just gonna be Giant Rat, and that'll be able to special summon something. And he'll get more f attack power on that. So, I mean, whatever. <laughs> so the Breaker is gonna attack the Giant Rat. And that will be able to summon something here. And then this should probably be game, and it is game! So. A very interesting match. I mean, you thought he would—he, you, you thought Compt only won these duels because of burning. As yes, he just completely blew out Geist from 8,000 life points with just burn traps in game one, and then game two, it was a kind of a close game. But eventually, Geist got the resource advantage. And then here in game three, it's a pretty decisive, just regular old victory from Comp's pretty cool original, you know, random panda koala burn deck. I don't even know what this is. But in the end, the underdog ends up winning it, and the 1700 rating guy ends up losing it. So, anyway, that's all I got to say about this match. Hopefully you guys got some enjoyment out of here. And unfortunately, I was the only one to say something in here. Very, very sad that no one else was able to say anything in this watcher's chat, but I mean, whatever, man. So... Pretty good match. I'm glad I got this on camera. I'm glad I got this recording. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Until next time, this has been Stew Dog, and I'm signing out.